Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller drama films from 2002, titled Enough. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie kicks off with the sunny streets of LA, our main character, Slim, and her co-worker, Ginny, are waitresses at a diner in Los Angeles. Life in the diner seems to go on as usual for Slim, until one day when something interesting happens. Slim catches the attention of a man named Robbie, who walks in and starts flirting with her. But then, this charming dude named Mitch Hiller interrupts them. It turns out Mitch overheard Robbie making a bet with his friend the day before that he could get Slim to go on a date with him for $200. Then Mitch threatens Robbie physically, which scares him enough to make him leave Slim. Slim and Ginny think this is romantic, and this is how Slim and Mitch met before the two get married. During the wedding reception, Ginny is on the dance floor with Slim's ex-boyfriend, Joe. Slim approves of their possible connection by giving a thumbs up. Slim's boss at the restaurant, Phil, gives them a large amount of cash. It turns out that Phil is Slim's father figure, since she didn't grow up with one. Mitch works as a commercial contractor, and being the guy with a bit more financial muscle, decides to buy them a fancy house in Los Angeles. Time passes, and life unfolds as planned. They soon welcome a sweet little baby into their lives, and their new baby girl named Gracie completes their little family. When Mitch gets a call, he hangs up, and Slim asks who it was, so the husband says it was just some construction thing. The story continues with Slim and Mitch living a seemingly happy life together. Years go by, and Slim tries to spark some special time in the shower. However, Mitch says no because he has to go back to work. While Mitch finishes in the shower, his phone keeps ringing, so Slim decides to call the number back. Soon enough, trouble begins to knock at their door. Hi darling, where are you? It turns out that Mitch hasn't exactly been the loyal husband he's supposed to be. She confronts her husband about the cheating, and Mitch apologizes profusely to his wife and they hug. Now, this is where things really hit a rough patch. This doesn't stop Mitch from seeing other women, and Slim even sniffs out another woman's perfume on him. And that's when it becomes clear that this cheating thing isn't just a one-time mistake. His reasoning for this is that he's a man, and men and women have different needs. Unable to bear this discovery, Slim decides she's had enough of this mess, and musters up the courage to stand up to Mitch. In a shocking turn, he lets his anger take control and without warning, he slaps Slim across the cheek, and punches her right in the face. The husband asks her if she wants to fight, and says that he's a man and it's no contest. Mitch basically tells her that he is the boss, and doesn't want to sneak around and pretend to go to work anymore, so he says he is going to his mistress's house and will be back in a few hours. Mitch warns Slim not to even think about leaving him, he's so determined that he refuses to live without her, which sounds more like a threat than anything else. The following day, Slim pays a visit to Mitch's mother, who notices Slim's bruise on her face and hug her. Mitch's mother wonders what she did or said to provoke Mitch, and Slim is shocked by her question. Her friend, Ginny, advises her to get the cops involved and run away, but Slim doesn't like the idea of her daughter's father being put away in jail. At dinner, Mitch is unhappy that Slim went to see his mother. Mitch says he's very determined and always gets what he wants, but he can make it way worse for her. She goes to the police under the guise of asking for a friend, and tries to find out what options she has to safeguard herself and her daughter. The police officer explains that if a child is involved, she'll have to go through family court and prove that Mitch is actually a danger to the child. At this point, the complexity of the whole situation hits Slim, the police can't do much to help her. With newfound determination burning within her, Slim knows that it is time to take action. Later that night, when Mitch is asleep, Slim tries to sneak out with Gracie. Phil, her boss from the diner, Ginny, and another friend are there to pick her up. Slim quietly grabs Gracie, but as she's about to leave, Mitch comes out from behind, and pulls her by the hair, and kicks her. Her friends realize something's off when a loud commotion erupts inside the house. They rush in to help her and break into the house, but Mitch threatens them with a gun. However, Phil isn't gonna let Slim and Gracie stay there, he picks up Gracie who's asleep on the couch, and wakes her up, so that Mitch will now have to put his gun away. They all hurriedly leave the house, and drive off, but they can't decide where they should take Slim and Gracie. In the car, 
Slim realizes that she may have some broken ribs. Since Mitch knows where they all live, they decide to go to a hotel, but Slim's credit card is turned down, probably because Mitch cancelled it. The funds in her account have also been frozen. Left with limited options, Slim finds herself seeking refuge in a cheap motel. She hopes that by staying low-key, she could finally find some peace. However, later that night, Slim gets a call from Mitch. It turns out that he has tracked her down to the motel, and is trying to break into her room, forcing Slim to take Gracie and run out the back door. Now he chases after them like a maniac, but luckily, they manage to catch a bus in time. We then find out that Slim's got a trick up her sleeve, Phil helps Slim and Gracie catch a flight to Seattle. Slim's friend and ex-boyfriend, Joe, lives in Seattle, and Slim has always felt very safe with him. Now, Joe might be Slim's ex, but he's not about to let her down, so they decide to stay at his place, assuming he's okay with it. Suddenly, a knock is at the door, and Slim and Gracie hide. It's an FBI agent, who is investigating Gracie's supposed kidnapping, three men come in to search the place. When Joe asks to see the warrant, they don't show it to him, prompting Joe to realize that they are not actually the FBI. So he starts to call the police, but they take the phone from him. They look all over the house, but they are not able to find Slim and Gracie. Before the three men leave, they threaten Joe with a knife, and one of them decides to be a dickhead and slice his sofa. Later on, Mitch calls Joe and threatens him, and Slim feels terrible for putting Joe in danger. Now, she's getting desperate, she decides to leave Seattle and go to San Francisco to meet up with her estranged dad, Jupiter. Her estranged father who had abandoned her when she was two years old lives here. Slim used to send him letters when she was younger, but he never replied. And now, when she goes to him for help, he's kind of dismissive. He thinks she's just after his money, and a lot of people have tried the trick before, because he's known for having a lot of kids due to his active social life. After all the trouble with Mitch, Slim and Gracie go to Michigan where Phil's friends have found a group home for them to stay. Here Slim assumes a new identity and goes by the name of Aaron to protect herself from being located by Mitch. A few days later, Slim receives some money in the mail, money from her father, who has had a change of heart after Mitch's goons threatened him against helping her. Now, Jupiter's no superhero, but he knows that if Mitch is bothering him, then Slim must really need help. With this new money, Slim gets a chance for a brand new life, and uses the money to find a new house for Gracie and herself. She finds ways to make sure they are safe, and even tells her daughter to never call her Slim again. Later, Slim drives hours away from where they live, just to use a pay phone to call Mitch's mom. In her innocence, Gracie still wants to talk to her dad. Mitch's mother tells Slim that Mitch is going to start a custody battle, and advises her to let Gracie talk to Mitch, saying Slim should know how it feels to live without a father because of this. Reluctantly, Slim calls Mitch and lets Gracie talk to him, but Mitch is tracing the call to find out Slim's location, and he's doing it with the help of his cop friend Robbie. Remember Robbie from the beginning of the movie? They were running a scam before, and Slim was supposed to be a victim of that scam, but instead, Mitch married her. Robbie is under threat for Mitch to find Slim, or else he will report him for being a dirty cop. Later, Joe comes over to stay with Slim and Gracie for a day, but Robbie sees them all together, and finds out where they live. At night, Joe and Slim cuddle on the same bed as Gracie, and they talk about being together. Unfortunately, after Joe leaves, Slim is shocked to find Mitch inside her house. He says the typical thing, if he can't have her, no one can. As he pushes her and beats her, Gracie is watching this from the hallway. The little girl rushes to pull Mitch's hair to protect her mom, but he pushes her away, and luckily, Slim uses her secret pepper spray watch on Mitch. She grabs Gracie, and rushes outside the house, and even uses her lock that she installed to trap Mitch inside the house. They drive away recklessly, but another car follows her. Soon after, they stop at an alleyway to put on disguise. But then, Robbie knocks on her window, and this shocks Slim to the core, now that she realizes that Robbie had been in on this entire sham of a marriage. She drives away quickly, as Robbie tries to get her to pull over, but Slim refuses. While the car chase happens, Gracie cries for everything to stop. Slim, on the other hand, is more familiar with the roads, so she tricks Robbie into going over a block bridge, that ends up ruining his SUV, while Slim's car remains intact. The mother then goes to a barn, 
where her other getaway car that she prepared awaits her. While Gracie is still traumatized by everything, the mother puts on a new wig. Afterwards, Slim goes to see her lawyer, who tells Slim that it's too late because she didn't file any police reports earlier. Also, now Mitch might portray her as some drug addict at the custody hearing, and gain sole custody of Gracie. The lawyer even tells her that the upcoming custody hearing is all a ploy for Mitch to locate Slim, and have her killed. One day, Ginny finally meets up with Slim, so that Ginny can watch over Gracie for a while. Ginny wonders how long she'll have to watch Gracie, but Slim's all mysterious and doesn't give a straight answer, hinting at some hidden agenda. It is revealed that she plans on learning some self-defense to fight off Mitch. Oops. No, no way. Say it. Done for, right? He's got you by the throat. Let's drop that arm, reach up, grab my hand. That's it! Go, That's it! Go! Hop! Time goes by, Slim goes to see Jupiter to ask him to find a doppelganger for her. She plans to plant the body double in San Francisco for a devious plan. Afterwards, Slim goes into a store, with one of Mitch's employees following her. She gets her body double to lead him to the airport, while the real Slim stays behind. At night, Slim picks a lock at Mitch's house. We can see that Mitch is with another woman when he hears some commotion and gets up. Unbeknownst to him, Slim is in the ceiling watching over him. The next day, Slim finds out that Mitch is back to his old ways, sleeping with another woman behind his new girlfriend's back. When Mitch leaves, Slim prepares her weapons, messes with the power supply, hides all the knives in the house, uses a metal detector to find Mitch's guns, plants some letters talking about his abusive behaviors in the cupboard, and sets up a device to cut off all phone calls. Once everything's done, she waits like a viper waiting for her prey to come to her. Later that night, when Mitch returns, he's surprised to see his lights are off, but his neighbors still have electricity. Slim then announces her presence in the dark, and Mitch is shocked to realize his gun is not in its regular spot. He tries to call 911, but Slim's device won't let him. Finally, Slim turns on the lights and reveals herself, she's ready to fight. Mitch, however, still disses her for being a woman trying to fight a man. When I was defenseless, <coughs> she hits him, and tells him he's such a coward, only hitting her when she wasn't expecting it. When he's had enough, he hits her hard. However, Slim gets right back up, and the two go against each other, with Slim dodging and hitting him. She says that this would all be classified as self-defense even though it's in his house, she had planted letters in his home to show that they were meeting today to talk about Gracie. After a few hits, Mitch is badly beaten and bleeding, and she mocks him about being a true man. At one point, he tries to choke her, but she now knows very well how to counter this attack. She pushes Mitch into a table and he's knocked unconscious. However, before she can kill him, she stops herself, and calls Ginny, telling her that she isn't able to kill him. In the meantime, Mitch regains consciousness, and hits Slim on the head with a lamp, making her fall on the floor. She pretends to be unconscious, but as he's about to kick her, she gets up and thrashes him, ultimately kicking him off the floor, and Mitch meets his end, falling to his death. Afterwards, she throws away evidence in the water. Police get there, and tell her she's one of the lucky ones who survived domestic abuse. At the airport, Slim and Gracie are finally back together, in a beautiful reunion. In the end, they head to Seattle and stay with Slim's ex, Joe, and together, they go on to write a new chapter in their lives, a chapter without Mitch's darkness. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Enough 2002. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.